Hello students, welcome to EPG Pathsala. I am Samar Singh from Department of Microbial Biotechnology, Punjab University. Today we are going to discuss about module named DNA Modifying Enzymes under paper Genetic Engineering and Recombinant DNA Technology. Dear students, after going through the module, you would be able to tell what are DNA modifying enzymes, know the different types of categories of DNA modifying enzymes that we commonly encounter, and get a general idea about the properties, characteristics of different type of DNA modifying enzymes, and you will be able to give examples of each category of DNA modifying enzymes and briefly tell about their usage or application. DNA modifying enzymes, they are categorized into different categories. Broadly speaking, they can be categorized into composition modifiers that essentially modify the composition and the topology modifiers that can change the topology of the DNA molecule. The composition modifiers category includes enzyme which can be further subdivided based upon their activities such as nucleases, methyl transferases, that includes methylases as well as demethylases, and also phosphatases and kinases, sorry, phosphatases and kinases. Then comes DNA polymerases and DNA ligases. The DNA topology modifiers category includes enzyme which are usually referred as topoisomerases. They are further subdivided into type 1 and type 2 based upon their mechanism of action as you will see later during the module. DNA modifying enzymes, they are categorized into different categories. Broadly speaking, they can be categorized into composition modifiers that essentially modify the composition and the topology modifiers that can change the topology of the DNA molecule. The composition modifiers category includes enzyme which can be further subdivided based upon their activities such as nucleases, methyl transferases that includes methylases as well as demethylases and also phosphatases and kinases, sorry phosphatases and kinases. Then comes DNA polymerases and DNA ligases. The DNA topology modifiers category includes enzyme, which are usually referred as topoisomerases. They are further subdivided into type 1 and type 2 based upon their mechanism of action as we will see later during the module. Let's start with DNA nucleases or DNases. These are the enzymes that break phosphodiester bonds. They are categorized into multiple categories based upon where they make that cut. For example, exo, they are usually referred as exo if they are degrading the strands of DNA from one end. Examples are exonuclease 1 or 10 that degrades in 3' prime to 5' prime direction from the end and exonuclease 7 that degrades single standard DNA in both 5' prime to 3' prime or 3' prime to 5' prime direction while rec j nuclease degrades DNA in 5' prime to 3' prime direction only endonucleases these DNAs degrade or make a cut at an internal site we will talk about endonucleases in other module as well as briefly we will cover in the same this module as well then there is another category usually referred as exonucleases it is actually a category of endonucleases that hydrolyzes two phosphodiester bonds at a time they generally operate in repair systems they hydrolyze bond one on either side of the distortion caused by mutagenic lesions for example ABC exonuclease that works in nucleotide excision repair. A few exonucleases and endonucleases are also known that degrade only single stranded DNA. This slide gives you an overview 
of different kind of exonucleases known for example the top one as you see is dna is one it requires divalent cations and based upon the cation presence its activity may differ single or double standard dna then there is exonuclease 3 that requires magnesium or manganese ion it shows 3 prime exonuclease activity on double standard dna then there is a ball 31 exonuclease that requires calcium and magnesium it can cause shortening of the duplex dna from both ends then there is exonuclease 7 that degrades single standard dna from both ends and there are some mixed activity nucleases that can cut both dna and rna for example nuclease s1 that requires zinc ion it can degrade rna or a single standard dna into five prime mononucleotides then there is mung bean nuclease that also requires zinc and reducing agent it can degrade single standard dna as well as rna the reactions catalyzed by different types of endonucleases different types of endonucleases show different kind of activity what we mean by that we can if you look at the cartoon shown it will become more apparent to you for example s1 nuclease this is only cleaves single standard dna in a single standard dna as well as they can also make nick in double standard dna molecule dna is one it cleaves both single standard dna as well as double standard dna as shown in the cartoon on your right and then there is a category which is referred as restriction endonuclease they mostly cleave double standard dna but only at a limited number of sequence specific sites restriction endonucleases are further divided into multiple categories we will deal with the individual categories in a separate module but the table given below gives you an overview of different restriction endonucleases such as type 1 which is known to cleave DNA at random sites far from its recognition sequence. Usually it's more than uh, 1000 base pairs away. While there is a type 2 restriction into nucleases, they usually cleave DNA at defined positions close to or within its recognition sequence. Then there is a just one more category of type 2G that is being referred here. They cleave outside its recognition sequence with both restriction endonuclease and methyl transferase enzymatic activities in the same protein there are other categories of type 2 as well that for that you should refer to the module specifically dealing with the restriction endonucleases classification then there is a type 3 that usually cleaves outside its recognition sequence and requires two recognition sequence in opposite orientation within the same dna and then the type 4 they usually cleave modified dna and both restriction and modification activities are in the same polypeptide chain here it should i would like to draw your attention to that type 2 are the most characterized restriction into nucleus you may be aware of bam h1 kpn1 hindi 3 and the ability to cleave DNA at well-defined sites without requiring ATP energy makes them very useful in recombinant DNA technology. This is example of some commonly used type 2 restriction in denucleases, their recognition sequence and cleavage sites. Here as you see BAMH1, CLA1, ECOR1, ECOR5, HE3, HINDI3 and other enzymes they all usually recognize a small stretch of DNA sequence usually 4 to 6 or 8 base pair long and they usually make cut within the recognition sequence which is shown by arrows and wherever you see star it represents that if that position is methylated the restriction endonuclease doesn't work DNA methyl transferases 
their enzymes which are many a times part of the restriction modification system their key role is in the dna repair system and epigenetic modification they are referred as methylases when they methylate nucleotides generally they catalyze the transfer of methyl group from s adenosyl methionine to specific nucleotides of double stranded dna molecule as they make part of repair system in e coli some enzymes you must be aware of such as dam methyl transferase that transfers a methyl group from sam to n6 position of the adenosine residue in the sequence gatc while the other methyl is known as dcm it transfers a methyl group from sam to the internal cytosine residue in the sequence cca gg or cct gg dna methyl transferases that can remove methyl groups are also important for the cell and those that can remove methyl groups they are usually referred as demethylases they also have role in both dna repair and epigenetic modification one example of this dna methyl transferase that can demethylate is o6 methyl guanine dna methyl transferase also abbreviated as mgmt or agt this enzyme can remove methyl group at exocyclic ring oxygens of dna preferably from o6 methyl guanine position but also remove longer alkyl chains from dna that may be ethyl propyl butyl benzyl and two chloroethyl groups as well as o4 methylated thymine the alkyl group is transferred from the substrate which is the dna to a site in the enzyme usually cysteine residue of a conserved sequence proline cysteine histidine arginine valine in the enzyme which in the absence of a second substrate remains covalently attached to the protein thus these enzymes work on a suicide mechanism this is a cartoon that depicts how mgmt mediates demethylation of the bases here the methylated base is uh, shown in red and the removal of methyl group shown in red that is cs3 is mediated by mgm2 by taking that methyl group to its cysteine residue another example of dna demethylase is alkylation repair protein b and its human homologue alkbh they belong to iron alpha ketoglutarate dependent deoxygenases they remove alkyl groups from a wide variety of substrates including monoalkyl and exocyclic bridged adducts from nucleobases by oxidative dealkylation mechanism and they require molecular oxygen to oxidize the alkyl groups so in this demethylation reaction the enzyme doesn't follow the suicide mechanism as we have seen for mgmts rather the enzyme is available to work again this is the cartoon depicting how this oxidative dealkylation reaction works so in presence of as shown in the cartoon methylated cytosine in the presence of oxygen and iron this alk ALKB or ALKBH 1 2 3 any of the enzymes would be following the same mechanism they in the presence of iron can remove the methyl groups resulting into cytosine formation similarly they can also remove methyl groups from hydroxy methyl adenine as shown in the cartoon below Now let's talk about role of DNA methylation. The DNA methylation plays a number of roles in a cell such as it inhibits binding of proteins including the transcriptional machinery to the DNA and thereby in a sense can block gene expression. It can also recruit specific repressors at the site that then switch off uh, nearby genes 
which is also many times referred as gene silencing and often it is done by recruiting histone modifying enzymes. It also allows discrimination between parent and daughter strands of DNA during DNA repair. It protects the DNA from the action of endonucleases which are part of restriction modification system. Furthermore, the indiscriminate methylation alkylation is known to destabilize genomes. DNA glycosylases, they are a special class of enzymes that recognize and remove the damaged base nucleotides present in DNA by hydrolyzing the glycosidic bond between sugar and nitrogenous base. They are part of DNA repair system and they produce a basic sites usually referred as AP sites. Multiple lesion specific DNA glycosylases with different specificities exist in cells as a part of repair system. For example, a specific glycosylase recognizes the uracil generated as a consequence of deamination of cytosine while another recognizes OxoG generated as a consequence of oxidation of guanine. 11 different DNA glycosylases have been identified in human cells. DNA phosphatase and polynucleotide kinase. These are special classes of enzymes. Phosphatases specifically cause removal of terminal 5' phosphate group from nucleic acids. Remember, they do not hydrolyze phosphodiester bonds, rather they just remove the terminal 5' phosphate groups. While the polynucleotide kinase enzymes catalyze the reverse of phosphatase enzymes reaction, what they do? They transfer a phosphate group from an ATP molecule to the 5' hydroxyl terminus of a nucleic acid, causing phosphorylation of the 5' and number of DNA phosphatases and kinases are available commercially. This table just gives you ex two examples of this category. Alkaline phosphatase that I guess most of you must have heard. They require zinc and magnesium ions and they remove 5' phosphate groups from nucleic acids. Then there is another enzyme named T4 polynucleotide kinase. It requires ATP, magnesium ion and reducing agent to work. It transfer a phosphate group from ATP to 5' hydroxyl terminus of a nucleic acid at neutral pH. Let's talk about DNA polymerases. DNA polymerases are enzymes that add nucleotides to the pre-existing strand of DNA or really to a RNA molecule. The examples of DNA polymerases that use DNA as a template or in other words uh, their activity is dependent on DNA. They are DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 2, DNA polymerase 3, DNA polymerase epsilon, DNA polymerase delta. The generally catalyzed reaction involves the transfer of a nucleotide monophosphate from a nucleotide triphosphate to a pre-existing polynucleotide molecule or DNA molecule resulting in the extension of polynucleotide chain as depicted in this reaction summary. The examples of DNA polymerases that use RNA as a template not DNA or in other words the DNA polymerase activity is RNA template dependent are known as reverse transcriptases and some of the examples are the enzymes that come from MMLV or HIV etc. There are also DNA polymerases that can add nucleotides in a template independent manner which are usually referred as terminal transferases. They are quite useful in performing addition of selected or specific nucleotides at the 3' end of a DNA molecule during DNA cloning. This activity is also referred as tailing of the DNA molecule. This table gives you some 
commercially available DNA polymerases examples and these are categorized based upon what those polymerases do. For proofreading polymerases such as PFU, O, VENT and PAB, their polymerization requirement includes a template, DNTP and magnesium chloride and they usually show 5' prime to 3' prime polymerization activity and 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity and sometimes 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease or proofreading activity they are usually high fidelity and they are used in PCR another enzyme example is stack DNA polymerase it requires DNA template DNTPs and magnesium chloride to work it has 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity and 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity it is also generally used for PCR but remember it does not have 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease or proofreading activity and another enzyme that is commonly used is terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase it does not require a template while other polymerases do, it just requires a DNA primer, magnesium, or presence of cobalt ion, and it causes addition of nucleotides at 3' end. Then there is another example of reverse transcriptase AMV or MAV that requires RNA template and primer for polymerization. It shows reverse transcriptase activity, but that means it can reverse, transcript, uh, reverse transcribe an RNA to a DNA molecule. Similarly, another reverse transcriptase MULV or MMLV is there that can also do the same uh, reverse transcribing the RNA molecule to a DNA molecule. I would like to draw your attention to one more uh, DNA polymerase enzyme that's called TTH. It's unique in the sense that it can use DNA as well as RNA as a template while other enzyme either use DNA or RNA as a template and using a primer in the presence of magnesium or magnesium ion it may so polymerase activity or reverse transcriptase activity depending upon the template available and the ion present. DNA ligases. These are the enzymes that join DNA fragments by catalyzing the formation of a phosphodiester bond between a 3' hydroxyl group and a 5' phosphate group at a single strand break or in a double stranded DNA. They use high energy cofactors such as ATP and AD plus to create a phosphodiester bond. DNA ligases play a key role in DNA replication, DNA repair, and they are very important in recombinant DNA technology. Some commercially available DNA ligases are T4 DNA ligase that requires magnesium and ATP to work. It can connect blunt as well as cohesive ends in duplex DNA, RNA or DNA-RNA hybrids. Then another enzyme E. coli DNA ligase or the ligase enzyme that comes from E. coli, it requires magnesium ion and NAD plus for its activity and it can join cohesive double stranded DNA ends. It's active on blunt ends in the presence of ficol or polyethylene glycol in vitro. Topoisomerases. These are the enzymes that change the DNA topology. They generally remove supercoils, relieving the torsional stress present in the overwound DNA. They transiently break the DNA backbone, thereby changing the DNA linking number and allowing the DNA supercoils to relax. The substrate and product of a topoisomerase reaction only differ in topology. They are chemically identical. They are classified according to the mechanism they use for changing DNA topology. Topoisomerase 
1a and 1b they break one of the two strands of dna and they do not require atp while type 2 they cleave both strands of dna during reaction and they require atp hydrolysis note topoisomerases can break the dna backbone so can untangle dna that is inappropriately linked or knotted both types of topoisomerases are present at replication forks in both bacteria and eukaryotes. Remember, type 1A enzyme facilitates strand passage of one single strand past the another. Type 1B enzymes, whereas allows the free end of a cleaved single stranded DNA to swivel to release supercoils before relization. Type 2 enzymes, just allow passage of one strand behind the other. This cartoon shows the mechanism of topoisomerase. On the left hand side, you see the mechanism followed by type 1A. In the middle, you see the mechanism followed by type 1B. And towards your right hand side, you see the mechanism followed by type 2 enzyme. In all these uh, topoisomerase reactions, Usually the first step is attack on the phosphodiester backbone of DNA by a tyrosine hydroxyl on the topoisomerase enzyme itself and formation of a phosphoester linkage between the tyrosine and either the 5' prime or 3' prime end of the cleaved strand that keeps one end of a DNA strand in place. Next step is change in DNA topology. It is then followed by step 3 where reversal of the cleavage reaction occurs that results in to the re-ligation of the two ends and producing a DNA without a break. Dear students, now let's summarize what we have learned so far in the current module about different DNA modifying enzyme categories. The nucleases, first of all let's talk about them. They can cut, shorten or degrade nucleic acid molecules. They are referred to as exonucleases whenever they remove bases from the ends, whether it's 5 prime or it's a 3 prime L. They are referred as endonucleases whenever they make a single cut at an internal position. These are referred as Restriction endonucleases whenever they make an internal cut only after recognizing a specific sequence in a DNA molecule. They are referred as exonucleases when they make internal double cuts in the DNA molecule. The next category is ligases. They join nucleic acid molecules together. The next category is the polymerases, they generally make copies of molecule in a template dependent manner which can be a DNA or a RNA strand. They are generally referred as just DNA polymerases when they use DNA as a template. While when they use RNA as a template, they are usually referred as reverse transcriptases. When they can perform template independent polymerization, they are referred as terminal deoxynucleotidal transferases. The terminology modifying enzymes is generally used for enzymes that remove or add chemical groups to the canonical DNA molecule. Though not accurate, the terminology, terminology is still in use. Some important DNA modifying enzyme categories are methyl or alkyl transferases that carry out methyl or alkyl group addition or removal from DNA molecules. Whereas phosphatases and kinases perform phosphate group removal and addition respectively. The enzyme category glycosylases whereas removes the nitrogenous bases from DNA molecule by breaking the glycosidic bonds. The topology modifying enzymes category includes various topoisomerases that can change the topology of DNA molecule. Thank you.